From WFRV Local 5, your local election headquarters, this is Newsmaker Sunday. Good morning and welcome to Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. Well, election season is closing in and state Senate districts are looking a little different now moving forward following redistricting. And one of the races that we are keeping an eye on is state Senate district where Eric Wimberger's seat is up for grabs, state Senate 30. On the Republican side, Alloway Village President Jim Rafter is campaigning. And on the Democratic side, Jamie Wall returning to the political ring after running for Congress back in 2012 and joining us this morning is Jamie Wall. Jamie, good to see you again. Yeah, same here, Tom. Uh, thanks for having me here. Um, tell us the Jamie Wall story before we get into the nuts sure. and bolts of politics. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I, I was born in St. Vincent Hospital and uh, I've lived about three blocks away for the last you know, not quite 20 years, so I guess I haven't made it very far in life. Sure, you're but, local. Uh, exactly, <laughs> but uh, um, I actually grew up in a dairy farm in southern Brown County, a small family farm. My dad farmed in partnership with his brother, and they, they both worked off the farm as well. Mm -hmm. So my dad spent uh, 34 years mostly as a prison guard at, the, at what they used to call the reformatory at, right. the, at the state prison in Alloway. Um, you know, public schools, uh, first in my family to go to college. Um, I've spent most of my adult life in, in the private sector and business and most of that as, uh, as a consultant working with business people to help them you know, solve problems that they have. Um, back in the day, I also spent a couple years running Wisconsin's economic development programs for private businesses, mm -hmm. helping them expand and create jobs uh, here and all around the state. Uh, in that role, I had a chance to work with uh, Procter & Gamble uh, when they had uh, a new paper machine going into their mill in downtown Green Bay and that project uh, you know was cost a lot of money and sent a very positive message about the health of the right. paper industry here and also locked down those uh, you know good family supporting jobs for, for quite a while so I was proud of that and uh, also worked with some local business leaders to help establish the new north which is a, kind of a regional economic development association in this part of the state. Um, Beyond that, uh, you know, I'm local in the community, helped stand up my neighborhood association again last year, uh, sit in the Green Bay Water Commission, so if you turn on your tap in the morning and water comes out, I had almost nothing to do with that. That's the staff who, you know, who, who know what they're doing, but uh, yeah, those, that's, that's a little bit about me, I guess. Tom. And I want to touch on a lot sure. of those positions that, that you had just mentioned, okay. but one thing you did mention, first person in your family to go to college, Sure. but uh, maybe more important than that, you're a Rhodes Scholar. Mm -hmm. And for those who are unfamiliar with Rhodes Scholar, what's the criteria for that? How do you become one? Uh, you, you interview. Uh, it's, yeah. I guess it's one of the few things you can do as a young person that you can't live down. You know, that may be a Heisman Trophy, but I was nowhere near that athletic, you know. So, uh, no, it's. Um, there are 32 Americans who have a chance to go and study at Oxford in England for a couple of years. So I, I graduated from UW Madison, and uh, you know was fortunate enough to you know to, to earn that chance, and that that opened some doors to me, and you know gave me a you know a, I guess maybe a bigger picture in the world. But uh, you know I like I said I came I came home, <laughs> which is where I wanted to be. Yeah. You yeah. are a business consultant. Who do you consult for, and and what do you do for them? Yeah. Um, Honestly, a variety of things, but I mean, if you think of it in two kind of buckets, um, I, I work with companies to help them figure out what they should do, and then sometimes I help them actually do that as well. So just to, you know, to, to, to give you an example, one of the last projects I worked on was, uh, this was a long-term client of mine in the medical device industry, and this was working with um, a slate of their junior executives, the people who were just below the C-suite, but were C-suite, but were kind of up-and-comers, and, comers and mm -hmm. you know, help coach them through some internal projects where they were looking for opportunities for the business. So that that was rewarding because I got a chance to you know get to know these people and work with them. And it's uh, I guess I'm old enough now I can be a credible coach to people, you know. Uh, so that's that, that's that's one thing. But it is it, it's been satisfying to do the kind of operational work too, where you walk into a facility that's maybe not doing so well and you know walk out 
three months later and you know you've you've seen the numbers move and sure. uh, helped help them uh, get back into profitability okay yeah. 12 years ago you ran for Congress yep. lost to Reed Ribble mm -hmm. then you took some time away from politics and here you are right getting back in again sure what was the trigger what made you decide to get back into the fray well I mean I, I, I clearly anybody who runs for office now is there's 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 got to be something wrong with them but you know <laughs> but aside from that um, it, uh, I, I honestly didn't expect to be doing this again. I was, you know, perfectly happy running my own my own business, yeah. and uh, you know, like I said, being being a part of the community here. Uh, but uh, honestly, I think the new legislative maps had a lot to do with it. I wasn't particularly happy with the direction of the state leadership that we've had in the legislature, where. Um, we really had a bunch of politicians who were really not accountable to the citizens. They'd kind of pick their own voters and it didn't really, we had elections, but it didn't really matter what, uh, you know, too much what happened there because the, the districts determined who was going to run the place. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that was very good for the, for the state and I think the average voter knows that too. I mean, I've been going door to door now for a while and the number one thing I hear from people is that, um, you know, basically, you know, for cripe's sake, can't, can't you people just work together and try to get something done? Uh, and I, I, I think every news story that's come out of Madison for the past decade or so has been a lot of partisan infighting and there's not a lot of people who want to work together, people who want to, you know, cooperate and try to actually solve problems. Um, you know, as I said, I've spent my whole professional life kind of working to solve business problems and I think some of that mindset would be, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a, a relief compared to some of the things we've seen come out of Madison. So hopefully, you know, it's a new day with the new maps and we can have a little bit more sanity and a little bit more civility and a little bit more compromise. And I'd, I'd like to be part of that. And we have much more to come with Senate candidate Jamie Wall right after this. So please stay with us. Well, welcome back. Our guest this morning, Jamie Wall, who is running for State Senate District 30. Uh, over the past few years, you've been uh, active in the community, to say the least. Uh, you spent a few years running Wisconsin's economic development programs. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your role there, and how would what you did translate sure. into becoming a legislator? Well, I, I'd say just a couple things. First of all, I mean, it was, it was, I, I enjoyed that work because you were part of facilitating the success of 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 businesses mm -hmm. and you know look um i'm running for political office we think and talk a lot about government obviously and i'm sure we're going to in sure. this interview but it's the private sector that drives the economy and you know provides you know all the revenue that you know we use to pave the streets and run the schools and everything else all right so this was part of state government that was uh, devoted to helping Wisconsin businesses. And, you know, I mentioned an example or two of that early, the, the earlier, the Procter & Gamble mill, for mm -hmm. example. But uh, one of the areas there that I was particularly proud of is we did a lot of work to um, work with smaller startup businesses uh, and to make sure that they had the funding that they needed to, to expand. Uh, and because it turns out that if you want your economy in 10 years to look different from what it does now, you've actually got to do a good job of growing a crop of, uh, of, of entrepreneurial businesses. Yeah. And not all of them are going to make it, but some of them are going to go out and succeed and, and, you know, and employ, employ people and do all the other good things that, uh, that we expect from the private sector. Um, so that's one thing. I mean, just I think the nature of the work itself was, was valuable. But the other thing I think that would be relevant is that um, you know, I had kind of a worm's eye view or, or you know, of, of state government. And I think a lot of politicians, you know, talk and think in big generalities, but haven't had a chance to be actually, you know, where things were happening out in the agencies. I think that was a, is going to be a good, a good perspective sure. about what's realistic to expect about, let's not do things that are so complicated that no group of human beings could ever, you know, ever hope to run them mm -hmm. responsibly. Uh, so uh, th I, th I think that's, that was also a good lesson to take there. All right, you also yeah. established uh, New North. Well, I, New I North? helped a bunch of business leaders establish okay. New North. They, 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 they did the work, but the New North is, um, any, New stands, of course, for Northeast Wisconsin, right. and New North is a pun in the New South, you know, kind of Atlanta and all, all of what they were doing back 30 years ago to attract business down there. Yeah. But uh, um, this was a group of local business leaders who came together and said, gosh, you know, 
maybe we shouldn't be competing Green Bay with Appleton and Appleton with Oshkosh and you know everybody with Manitowoc. Maybe, maybe we can actually work together and try to bring more resources to the table. So um, I was introduced to them and I helped them get their, their first kind of startup funding. It was a grant from the state and they needed to you know, match that money with, 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 they raised, what, with what they raised from you know, their companies and other sure. businesses. But um, you know, so now, I don't know, 20 or so years later, that organization is still, is still you know, up and running strong. I was at its uh, annual meeting at Lambeau Field here uh, maybe a month ago with, gosh, I, you know, several hundred, maybe a thousand people um, from around the area. So they, they, they try to market the area to, to businesses and they try to make sure that, um, uh, that they're, they're, they're common resources, you know, expert advice that, that startup businesses and others can, uh, can tap into as well. All right, yeah. you, uh, you are a member of the Wisconsin 4-H Foundation. I used to be. All yes. right, mm -hmm. and in, in your past and also the Clean Wisconsin Action Fund. Sure. Seems like a mix of farming and, and environment. Was, was it previous life experiences that, that led you in that direction? I think so. I mean, I, I was a farm boy, yep. and, you know, like a lot of farm boys, I think the 4-H program was a big deal for me as a kid. I mean, I, I remember the highlight of every summer was going to De Pere for the Brown County Fair, you sure. know, and we showed, you know, we showed cattle, we showed sheep, we had a few sheep, Suffolks on the farm, which, and that, that was always fun, but... Uh, um, so, you know, fast forward a decade or two and, uh, you know, the folks at the 4-H program asked if I'd be, you know, willing to, you know, sit on that, uh, sit on that board and help raise, basically raise money for the 4-H program around the state. And that, that program did as much for me as anything aside from, you know, the, the, my parents and the schools and, you know, in, in, in raising right. me. Uh, so that was, it was an honor to do that. Um, Clean Wisconsin, that's, it's an, it is an environmental group. Uh, they focus on you know, clean water and sometimes adapting to climate change as well. How do we get uh, you know, better, cleaner, cheaper energy um, you know, for, uh, to make the state you know, better in, in a decade or so? Uh, so uh, that I think, you know, I think actually growing up in the country and, uh, you know, being out in the fields and, you know, working with animals actually did help. Uh, you know, I grew up hunting fishing with my, with my folks and my neighbors as well, and that did give me an appreciation for the outdoors. Sure. And so I think the two of those things kind of did, did go together now that, you, now that you ask about it. And then uh, as uh -huh. president of the Green Bay Water Commission. Vice President. Mm -hmm. Vice yeah. President. What, uh -huh. what, what do you do there? Well, um, we're the oversight board for the water utility. Okay. And, um, you know, we, like, like any board or commission for, for a city agency, you know, we, we hire the, you know, the director of it. We, you know, set goals. We, you know, we check in and make sure th things are headed in the right direction. We approve the budget. Uh, but, I mean, that's, that's been actually a lot of fun for me because, it, quite honest, the water utilities are pretty pretty well functioning. I mean, you, you, when you turned on your tap this morning, the water came out, sure. all right? You yep. know, but um, uh, this was this happened before I came on board, but I was certainly all in favor of it. We were the first city in the state to take all of the lead service lines out of our uh, out of yes. our territory yep. without a court order to do that, all right? And we were able to go after uh, some money from the DNR and other sources to, to make that happen. And that was obviously a good thing for public health. I mean, lead is, lead is toxic. Sure. And, uh, you know, and people didn't really know that or appreciate that. And there were a lot of uh, old, old lead laterals that were, in, that were in place. But, you know, over a period of many years, we were able to, you know, eliminate them from the system. We are, we're now almost through with taking out uh, all the galvanized lines that were one time downstream from lead, because it turns out they can kind of accumulate some of that, uh, you know, poisonous material as well. But the end result is the, you know, the citizens of Green Bay and Ashwaubenon and a number of other places, you know, in the area that's served by the utility are going to have, you know, better, cleaner, safer water uh, as a result. Things we yeah. don't think about. We have much mm -hmm. more to come with Jamie Wall right after this. So please stay right there. Back now with Jamie Wall running for State Senate District 30 on your campaign website. Jamie, you've got some issues I want to touch upon quickly, each one. Uh, housing costs. Oh, yeah. What needs to be done there? Well, um, look, I, I, I own my own home, and its cost has gone up, or its, you know, its market price has gone up pretty substantially in the past sure. few years. So, I mean, that's great for me, but it makes it harder for 
you know, young families who are trying to, you know, get their first home actually makes it harder for renters too, because rent prices go up and down in, in, in tandem with home prices. So, I mean, this is part of just a general sense I get when I'm talking to people at doors that, you know, the economy's doing well in a lot of ways. It's pretty easy to find a job now if you want, but, you know, some people are feeling pinched and, uh, Anything that we can do, you know, in state government to help with that, and I think, you know, with regards to housing costs, uh, we should make it easy as possible to, you know, to build new housing, to increase the supply, whether it's single family or apartments, condos, all of the above. Uh, I also would like to see the state do more to um, help first-time home buyers who, you know, don't have the equity or might be scraping to come up with a down sure. payment. There's some models in other states where. Um, we've been able to, that, that they've been able to provide bridge funding to you know kind of get you to the, the last ten yards into the end zone to afford that afford that mortgage. Yeah. So I mean those are a couple examples of things that should happen there to you know help young families and everybody else who's concerned about housing prices. All right, yep. health care. Oh yeah, a, that's a big one. How do you wrap your hands around that? Well, I mean if we we could talk about this for another four <laughs> yes. hours, not four minutes, but um, look when my mom was sick, I mean it. it I, I learned pretty quickly how how medical bills could could pile up and she yeah. had good insurance i mean it was it was all right but it's something people worry about and something people you know families have to think about around the kitchen table um, one very concrete thing that the state could do is do what 40 other states have done which is take um, money from the federal government to expand the badger care program uh, which would save the state literally more than a billion dollars while providing health care to you know close to 100,000 uh, Wisconsinites, so in my mind, that's a no-brainer. Um, and there's other things that we should do to, you know, help keep a lid on prescription drug costs, to uh, make medical prices more transparent, uh, and that that helps kind of keep keep pressure down in costs as well, because people have a little bit of choice of where they can spend their health care dollars. As you yeah. run for office, people want to know where you stand on the abortion issue. Sure. Well, I mean. Fundamentally, Tom, um, I don't think I know better than the women of Brown County. I mean, I trust them to make decisions about, uh, you know, one of the more intimate parts of their lives without my supervision. These are conversations that should be had between a woman and her doctor, not a woman and her state senator. So, I mean, that's, that's where I stand. Um, how big of a factor do you think the abortion question is going to be, both on the state level and the national level come election day. I mean, I think I think it's a real issue. It's it's legitimately on the ballot. We've seen in other states where Republicans have pushed through some you know pretty stringent abortion bans. Um, there's a Republican state senator here in Brown County who wants to outlaw in vitro fertilization and some forms of contraception. That seems just crazy to me. I think uh, we should let families make their own decisions without the involvement of politicians. Um, I do hear about it from people on the doors. Um, you know, I, I think there are a lot of a lot of well, women in particular, but you know, also men who sort of looked at uh, uh, the Supreme Court striking down Roe v. Wade and shook their head and said, you know, the government ought not be taking rights away from people, which sure. is what it seems to have happened here. We are back to wrap up with Jamie Wall right after this. So please stay right there. And we are back with a Democratic candidate for State Senate District 30, Jamie Wall. Jamie, you know what's going on down in Madison, loggerheads. The Republicans mm -hmm. have no use for, for this governor. It is gavel in, gavel out. Are the days of reaching across the aisle uh, over with? Is it simply a matter of numbers? We've got more of them. We call the shots. Well, I, I don't think those days should should be over. Yeah. I think there there is room. Not look. Not everything needs to be a knife fight all the time. You you can't take the politics out of politics. But um, you know we've got some real problems in Wisconsin, and you know some of them. If you had a group of reasonable people who could get around the table and could get the facts together, you could probably hash out a compromise. Now, what's happened? And again, this is in part because of these crazy gerrymandered maps that we've had here. Is that you know the Republican majorities. Uh, have been able to say, look, it's my way or the highway. Right. You know, right. we have the numbers, we're not accountable for the voters, and we're going to do what we want. But that's not the way a democracy should work. It's not healthy for the state, and I think it means that we haven't been, you know, we haven't had a chance to look at things like anything from how the schools ought to be funded to, you know, what, what should the state's prison system look like? And people are going to disagree, but some of that is just dollars and cents and, 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 and what makes sense. And that's how I've spent my career. 
Um, if you want a partisan bomb thrower, I'm, I'm not your guy. If you want somebody who's going to go to Madison and empower the same people who've been tying the state government up in knots for the past decade, I'm not your guy either. But if you want somebody who's going to work hard, um, who's going to listen to his constituents, and who's going to try to do the best you can for him, well, I'd be, I'd be honored to have your vote. All right, you are yeah. looking for Senate seat number 30, District yes. 30. Uh, your pitch, sir, for sure. as to why people should get your vote. All right, they well, get their vote. look, uh, the, the Green Bay area, Senate District 30, by the way, is Green Bay, Ashwaubenon, Alloway, Bellevue, De Pere, and then just a little bit of the towns of Ledgeview and Rockland to right. the south, all right? So um, this is a good place to live. Uh, I, I certainly enjoy it here. I know lots of people who've enjoyed raising their families, working, you know, just, just living life. But um, we can do better. Um, there are a lot of people out there who I think need their elected leaders to understand their problems, uh, to, to listen to them, and to try to take that to Madison and try to work to make their lives better. And that's, that's exactly what I want to do. I think uh, I've done that in my business career. I've I'm a problem solver by inclination and by training. Um, I've worked with people of, of all stripes and all political beliefs uh, in my professional work and some of the work I, d I did in economic development. Uh, so I, I think I can take my background and my passion and my interest and put it to work for you know the people here and the, the community that I, that I love. And that's, that's why I'm doing this and that's why I'm here today. Jamie Wall, a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for Thank being you. with us this morning. Mm -hmm. Much appreciated. And if you have a newsmaker in your town who you think we should have on this program, <coughs> let us know about it. Send us an email to tips at wearegreenbay.com or you can message us on Facebook. And be sure to join us once again Sunday morning at 7.30. Until then, have a great day.